One irony of the post-Cold War era is that former enemies now face the same dilemma. How to continue financing what it takes to stay in this game. As they've done time and again, the Russians turn their desperation into a practical solution. They keep the cold, hard cash coming in by selling rides in their combat jets. Powerless. Oh, oh it's, it, 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 it's almost beyond description. One of the most exciting, the most exciting thing I've ever done in my life. The sacred realm of the Russian fighter pilot is being invaded by Western thrill seekers. A person who is not uh, quite ready for G loads, there may be the instant loss of eyesight. Oh, okay. But it will pass very quickly. Mm -hmm. You won't even notice it. John Karasawa, a young California electronic specialist who loves fighter jet video games, couldn't resist when he learned he could fly the genuine article for $15,000. Requirements for the joyride were not very stringent, just the most cursory physical exam. Then a briefing from pilot Alex Garneyev, which assured the student of a gut-wrenching ride. Okay. Minimal one is you make first half of the loop and then half roll. This is a normal one. And so okay. Okay. all others I'll explain you. <laughs> okay. We'll mention the order of ejection once okay. more and then we'll fly. Okay. If you're ready, we'll go and change. I think so. Call sign jet lag. Suit up was followed by a brief lesson in use of the K-36 ejection seat. Eject, eject, eject. Oops. With John buckled into the cockpit, there was one small final detail, signing the release form. The problem with, with high-performance military flying is it's extremely harsh. You're looking at an environment that no human being was meant to be stuck in. And just the acceleration alone of going down the runway will put your stomach in the back of the airplane. You put a person in an airplane like this and their inner ear spins, they're pulling many G's, they're going upside down. The afterburner, when you light it, it just absolutely thumps you in the back, kicks in, immediately presses you in the back of the seat, and off you go. It's like being thrown out of a slingshot. The problem is that most people don't realize how violent it's going to be. And as a result, what happens is they get in it, they don't know they're getting sick, and all of a sudden, they're getting sick. And before you know it, they're back there. Then, a little too late, they're throwing up in a mask. And I, I call this kind of the zoom, boom, throw up in your helmet ride, which is a terrible thing to do to a human being, really. I will not 
feeling too well right now. But you really have to become acclimated to this kind of flying. It takes, uh, it takes a little while. Anybody can, but it takes a little while. I will say this. At first, it seems like a blur, but after you're through, you know you've done something that's quite unique. <laughs> I'm a little bit uh, woozy. I don't know if I can get out of the plane just yet. Where's Vladimir? Where is that guy? Oh, come here. Thank you. How are you? Very good. Good. Vladimir, you can be my wingman anytime. Oh, really? <laughs>